paper and pen Right away Right away Don't know just how to begin Right away Right away Just let the ideas flow Right away Right away Don't worry about where they'll go Right away Right away Let's have some fun Now we began Let's keep on riding Cause it's an exciting time I love to go to the library to read books about science fiction and space. I hope someday I'll get to travel in a rocket ship and walk on the moon. And maybe if I ever get to space, I'll have some interesting companions. Just like the ones written by fourth grader Emily Barklew and kindergartner Alexander Gibney. They go to the Alps Road School in Athens, Georgia. Watch with me their exciting story, The Space Adventure. Once there was a famous astronaut named Skip. He was going to the moon. What he didn't know was that three of his biggest fans had followed him to the spaceship. There was Brett the Lion. I can't wait to get his autograph. Roar! And Maddie the Tiger. I'm going to take his picture. Roar! And a cheetah named Emily. I just want to touch him. All of a sudden, the animals heard Skip say, Mission Control, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off! Finally, the spaceship landed. Mission Control, I'm now going to take a walk on the moon. <laughs> the animals followed Skip until he heard footsteps behind him. I hear something behind me. But that's no problem though because I'm astronaut Skip. Ah! <laughs> astronaut ran back to the spaceship and blasted off, leaving the three animals behind. Mission Control, it was awful. There's creatures attacking me from all sides. I think I'll write a book about it and make lots of money. As for the three animals... I didn't get his autograph. I forgot to turn the flash on. Oh, let's not worry about that now. We're stranded. Suddenly, they met an alien, a friendly alien, who adopted them, and they spent the rest of their lives on the moon. And they were always happy. Potato, tomato, clock, block. What are you doing? Oh, I'm writing a poem. A poem? Yeah, all you have to do is rhyme, right? Well, rhyming is part of it, but a poem can also be a story about something you like, oh. or maybe about something you don't like. Hmm. That's what fifth grader Stephanie Sintel from McGaw Elementary did. It's entitled, I Hate Fall. I hate falling when I'm running a race, because when I fall, I fall on my face! <laughs> I hate it when a brick falls. Oh, no! Especially when it lands on my toe. Sorry. Then I mumble and grumble and say words I shouldn't. Ah, ah, ah. Because it isn't okay. I hate it when leaves fall to the ground. I'm just glad they don't weigh a pound. I hate fall. The end. And now, welcome to another spine-tingling Tales from the Script. Mm. 
Welcome. I'm glad you're here for another scary story. One of the scariest things is a monster. <laughs> What's even scarier is when you put yourself in a story with the monster. And that's exactly what Jean Lowry did, a second grader from Midland Elementary, in her deliciously scary tale entitled The Monster That Jean Scared. <laughs> Sounds exciting. <laughs> One day, three friends, Amanda, Hi. Jean, Hi. and Jenny, Hi. were walking down the street, when all of a sudden, a monster popped up from behind a rock. I'll take you, and away we'll go. The monster kidnapped Amanda. What do you think? Amanda? Amanda? They saw that Amanda was gone. They looked everywhere for her. She's gone! I think Amanda's been kidnapped. And look, there are two sets of footprints. One going like this, and the other one like this. Well, how'd you do that? Well, you put one hand here, uh -huh. and you... Ah, uh, we don't have time for this. Look, these are leading right up to that spooky castle. I have an idea. Let's find Amanda and rescue her. Okay. And here's me at prom. Alone. Oh, the tea's ready. I'll be back. There she is. Let's rescue her and go. But just as they were about to rescue her... So, you thought you'd try and save your little friend. <laughs> well, now I've got the three of you. <laughs> like, oh! Oh, yeah? Well, you don't scare me. <laughs> Why don't you just go away? <laughs> and while you're at it, take a bath. Do something about that breath. Yeah. Clean up this place. It's disgusting. You're disgusting. Everything's disgusting. <laughs> Jean was so brave that she scared the monster off. <sighs> like, you saved us all, and you know what? What? Like, it's my birthday. <laughs> The three girls went home and had cake and ice cream and partied away. Like, for sure! Ooh, <laughs> a cake and ice cream party. Ooh, like for sure. Now that sounds scary. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to more tales of terror and suspense from all you authors out there to be presented on our next... Tales from the script. <laughs> Ta-ta for now. You add one cup of sugar and mix thoroughly. Hey, Elise, you know, you're reading a very important form of writing. What are you talking about, Sabrina? All I'm doing is reading the instructions on how to make cupcakes. Well, if a writer a long time ago had not taken the time to write down how to make cupcakes, then you wouldn't know how, and we wouldn't have dessert. In fact, we might not know how to do a lot of things, like building a plane or working a computer. That's what second grader John Knight from Town Point Elementary did in his story, How to Brush Your Teeth. First you get your toothbrush. First you get your toothbrush. Then you get your toothpaste. Then you get your toothpaste. Then you wet your toothbrush. Then you wet your toothbrush. Then you brush your teeth. Then you brush your teeth. 
<laughs> then you get a cup. Then you get a cup. Then you get some water. Then you get some water. Then you spit it out. <laughs> then you wipe your mouth. Then you wipe your mouth. And then you're done. How to brush your teeth. The end. An exciting thing about writing is that you're totally in charge. Now, there's many ways in which you can start a story, and you can decide which way to choose. Now, you might want to start with a narrator telling the story. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Sally. Or you can do like Brittany Cantrell from Independence Elementary School did, where she took her main character, Sally, and let her tell the story of hair. Hi, my name's Sally, and I really hate my hair. So I decided to ask my family what to do. Mom, what should I do with my hair? Cut it short. Dad, what should I do with my hair? Grow bags. Sis, what should I do with my hair? Get a perm. Hey, brother, what should I do with my hair? Just keep it the same. I couldn't decide, so I decided to ask my neighbors, the Cools. They have really cool taste. Well, here goes nothing. Mrs. Cool, what should I do with my hair? Well, honey, I think you should get some pigtails. I think I'll ask Mr. Cool. Mr. Cool, what should I do with my hair? Red hair. Now that's the trick. Curl it. Curl it big, like this. No, but every young girl needs is a topsy tail. A bun. A topsy tail. A bun. A topsy tail. So I went home and sat in my tree for a long time. I guess my brother was right. I'll keep my hair just the way it is. But now, what am I going to wear? <laughs> oh. What are you two laughing about? This Danny Duck is so funny. The way he always fools Pete Bunny really quacks me up. <laughs> oh, so you guys like stories with personification. Persona, Persona what? Personification. See, that's when an author gives human characteristics to things, like animals. That's how Danny Duck can talk and sing. And you should see how our next author uses personification. Clark Munson, a fifth grader from Villa Park Elementary, gives Frasier the dog a very funny personality in Frasier's Big Weekend. Hello, my name is Frasier, and I'm leaving now, Frasier. Be a good boy and take care of the house. And that's my owner, and he's finally going on vacation for the weekend. And that means... Party, party, party! So I just do my good dog thing. I just sit here and I wag my tail as I watch him leave. As soon as he gets around the corner, I'm out of my doghouse on the way to the park. I like going to the park. And I love laying in the sand and wiggling. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Hey. Hey, there's Mrs. Salem. She makes the best sandwiches. She puts plenty of turkey on them. They are yummy to my tummy. And she always has a spare one for me. <laughs> oh, Frasier, what a nice dog. Oh, look, it's my good buddies, Lassie and Baby Joe. They're the best. <laughs> we like to run. <laughs> Play tag, you're it. <laughs> hey, look. Big thrills to munch down at somebody else's goodies. A big juicy bone. Wow. Well, see you later, guys. I gotta go see my sweetheart lady. What a babe. We rub noses and say hello. Hi. Right. Hello, Fraser. What do you want to do? Let's go over there and watch the ducks in the moonlight. And then we can go have some ice cream. Sure. Oh, look. Somebody left a picnic basket and a blanket so that we can have a midnight dinner. 
Are you going to finish that? No. Ain't she something? Well, too bad we had to end it early, because my owner was coming home early in the morning. So I kissed my sweetheart goodnight. See ya. I quickly got into my doghouse as my owner pulled in the driveway. And I just sat there and did my good dog thing, wagging my tail, and I greeted him. Oh, I missed you so much, Frazier. What a weekend. I wish it would never end. I wonder when my owner's gonna go away again. Next time I go on vacation, I'm going to take you with me. Oh, no! I always like it when a story can teach me something. But what's even better is when that same story can entertain me and make me laugh. And that's what a group of writers did from Mrs. Bros to second grade class at King's Elementary in their story entitled Chester the Crocodile. Once upon a time, there lived a crocodile named Chester who loved to eat candy. I love candy. I can't get enough of it. I eat it for breakfast. <laughs> Jelly beans. Oh, and for lunch, licorice. <laughs> we mustn't forget dinner. Chocolate. <laughs> oh, and dessert. <laughs> Suddenly, he got a terrible toothache. Oh, no. Mom, every my teeth are killing me. Every one of them aches. I think you've been eating too much candy. I think it's now time for a trip to the dentist. Oh, no, not the dentist. Chester and his mom went to the dentist's office. Welcome to Dr. Bucky Bunny's. How may I help you? Oh, my son has a terrible toothache. I think he's eating too much candy. Follow me. Chester climbed into the dentist chair and began to cry. I ate too much candy. Oh, oh don't cry, Chester. Let me take a look. Oh, this doesn't look good. You're going to have to have all your teeth taken out. Because you ate too much candy. So the dentist pulled all of Chester's teeth out. Now remember, Chester, when your teeth grow back, don't eat so much candy. Eat more fruit and always brush your teeth. Don't worry, I'll eat right from now on. And from that day on, Chester never ate candy again. And all of his teeth did grow back. Now the moral of this story is... Don't eat too much candy. And always brush your teeth. Next! And they lived happily ever after. Hmm, I wonder. Wonder what, Sabrina? I wonder what really happens when these fairy tales end. I'd like to see a well-known story like Goldilocks and the Three Bears retold from a different point of view. Well, you're in luck. That's what we'll see in Braddy Locks, a story written by sixth grader Meredith Sutton from Lowell Elementary. Once upon a time, there lived three bears. Yes, the Papa Bear, the Mama Bear, and of course, the Baby Bear. Oh, this porridge is too hot. Why don't we go for a walk while it cools off? So they went for a walk. And no sooner had they left than a bratty little girl named Bratty Locks came upon the cottage. Ha! Huh. Everyone thinks I'm my twin sister Goldilocks, but I ain't. I'm Bratty Locks, and I'm here to show those bears what I'm made of. Now Goldilocks would have knocked on the door, but... I ain't her. hi -ya! So she kicked the door open and went inside. Hmm. Look! Porridge and me without a meal for at least an hour. <laughs> Ooh, this one's too hot. Ooh, this 
one's too cold. Hmm, this one's just right. <clears throat> My sister would eat this junk, but I'm gonna put it down the garbage disposal. And that's what she did. <clears throat> well, that's done. Now to rearrange the living room furniture. <laughs> This one's too big. I'll never get it out the window. Uh, this one's too soft. It won't even break. Ah, this one's just right. Braddy Locks picked up the baby bear's chair and threw it out the window, and it broke. <laughs> I wonder what's over there. Let's go see. Braddy Locks ran to the three beds. She jumped on the big one, messed the middle one up, and threw the bedspread of the little one on the floor. Ha! Now, to wait for those silly little bears to come home. The three unsuspecting bears came home from their walk. Well, Goldie, what are you doing here? I'm not Goldilocks, I'm Granny Locks. And I'm here to pay you back for mistaking me for my goody two-shoes sister. Look, she dumped all her food in the sink. And she threw my chair out the window. And I messed up your beds, too. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Braddy Locks. We were all done with our porridge. Oh, and we're getting a new set of chairs and table today. And today's the day we change the sheets. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Braddy, Braddy Locks. Braddy Locks was amazed and began to cry. It's not We hope you enjoyed our show today. Your stories are finished and all put away. But we'll come again another day. The stories you've seen through music and mime can be written by you if you just take the time. So pick up your pencil and paper. You'll see. The adventures and magic that writing sets free. So, right away. This has been Right Away. If you'd like to see your students' writings come to life on our program, call the Imagination Machine at 714-771-2499 for more information. Pick up a paper and pen right away. Right away. Don't know just how to begin right away. Right away. Just let the ideas flow right away. Where they'll go right away. Right away. Let's have some fun. Now we began. Let's keep our mind on it's an exciting kind of way.